Oregon took the initiative and legalized psilocybin cubensis magic mushrooms. This is crazy. And this is kind of old news because this happened somewhere in 2020. It is now 2022, right? But it has definitely been such a journey for this to finally happen. If you are aware, there has been such controversy with psilocybin for many, many, many years. Okay, psilocybin is not new. Um, it's been going on for centuries. It is ancient. Ancient medicine is how I like to look at it. Um, and this is amazing. This is so amazing. So in this video, I want to talk about where that is heading, you know, organ legalizing medicinal mushrooms um, and really just my thoughts, my opinion kind of on how that's going to look. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Tanya and on this channel I like to share videos on ancient medicine, mainly herbs and psilocybin mushrooms as well as garden talks. Join me for one of my garden talks. And so yeah, like I mentioned, uh, I want to talk about psilocybin today and its legalization. So I, this past week, have been waking up to a lot of comments from a really old video that I posted on my experience with magic mushrooms, what is an ego death, my ego death on them, just sharing my experience and if you want to watch that video, the link will be in, in the description. And it's pretty interesting to read everyone's experience from taking, you know, however large of a dose on magic mushrooms. But all of the comments, I feel like, are so transformative for that individual and the experience that they had, right? So you all know how I feel, or maybe you don't, about magic mushrooms, but I believe that when used properly they can truly change and impact your entire life and so i'm totally with the whole decriminalization legalization of magic mushrooms and so basically what does it mean that oregon legalized them um i wouldn't say they're completely legal and all of this kind of confuses me <laughs> honestly also something that i want to note is that for the past like three years I've been doing so much research on psilocybin, the experiences of other people, scientists, researchers, um, everything that's been going on with this whole legalization kind of thing. I've just been learning so much about them so I finally feel ready and called to share this video, okay, especially since I'm an Oregonian and that's what's up okay so basically oregon is the first state in the nation to vote to legalize psilocybin which researchers believe could help treat depression ptsd addiction that's mainly the use of this legalization and with a year to go before the implementation blah 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 basically it will be legal to administer uh, the psychedelic in a therapy setting right and so psilocybin is currently decriminalized and there's a huge difference from legalizing versus decriminalization right so decriminal decriminalization of a drug because psilocybin is still considered a drug of drugs is basically where there's certain regulations around it, right? So for psilocybin, uh, basically you can take it under a therapy and observed setting, right? But you can't take any home. You can't go home while you're still under the influence of it. Uh, you can't grow any of your own. Um, none of that, right? So that's why some of these articles, I don't know why it says legal because it's not. I recently read an article, it was like a short little story about somebody who went out in nature and they were looking and hunting for mushrooms and they ended up coming across psilocybin in real life, like growing out in nature and they ended up uh, 
like picking them and there was a park ranger and he caught them and so he ended up snitching on him and the guy ended up going to jail for that right so this was like years back now if that would have happened now a person wouldn't go to jail but they would get fined like a hundred dollars or something right so that's decriminalization basically so anyways I think that this um, allowing them in a therapy setting is really amazing really amazing and I think that it's going to impact a lot of people I think that it's going to change a lot of people's lives because from all the research that I've done this is mainly to treat uh, people who have experienced you know or experienced PTSD depression uh, anxiety and addiction right and so if you've ever taken magic mushrooms and it's had an impact in your life then you could probably understand how this will be so impactful for other people if you've never had an experience with the magic medicine then you probably have no idea right the the positive impact that it can have on people's lives another thing is that if you have experienced them we all have a different perspective on them. We all experience something different. Even if two people take the same dosage, they're gonna have complete different experiences because everybody is different. And I believe that the mushrooms take you on the trip that you need to experience, that they need to take you on, to teach you, to show you, right? And so I feel like that's why it's kind of tricky when it comes to um, all of this research and all of this but on a, all in all it is a beautiful magical medicine that can really heal you okay it comes straight out of mama earth and mama earth i feel like all the answers are in nature okay one thing that i keep reading in all of these articles and all of these videos is that it may take a couple of years for uh, the legalization of it for it to actually be um, in a therapy setting and the reason for this is because there's so much like small print and legal things that they're putting together such as the qualifications of a therapist overseeing a patient and what that's really going to take um, and the kind of interview process kind of thing for the client for the person itself who's going to be taking the medicine under supervision um, because I do believe that although psilocybin is very healing I do think that it can be dangerous that is one thing that I do agree with because I feel like if you're not in the right mindset or under supervision especially under a large dosage or it's your first time that you can experience who knows what okay I always say that you should never ever ever do magic mushrooms alone that's my own personal opinion even if you've done them a few times because you never know the trip that they're going to take you on it could be a complete ego death and you're alone and you don't know what to do okay like I said watch my other video on my experience on ego death but it was the most horrifying thing ever it was horrible at least I thought back then but now I look back I'm like wow that was really healing it's what I needed but I am so grateful and lucky that I had a guide there with me because if I didn't have my guide I could have lost my life like literally so I understand how they can be dangerous but that's where the importance of a guide comes in and that's basically what this therapy supervision kind of is but in a more healing and intentional way because the therapy therapist is going to guide you with questions to you know bring some of your trauma up for you to discuss for you to feel out you know what I mean but you you can also do this with somebody <laughs> but it's illegal you know what I mean so you can definitely do this with someone that you love someone that you trust and they could be your guide 
but again if they've never experienced it then they'll have no experience in guiding you it can't just be anybody so why is psilocybin illegal in the first place why has it taken decades and centuries for us to finally get here right that's a really big question okay despite what i just mentioned about them being dangerous okay i believe that this has taken so much time for obvious maybe not obvious reasons to some because there's a lot of competition in this world and the way that society is built you know what i mean with the pharmaceutical industry being at the top the pharmaceutical industry having so many people uh sick and sick literally in a lot of ways okay uh, I mean, it's scary, really. Like, a lot of people depend on medicine, medicine that's made in the lab. I feel like a lot of our sickness stems from our health. Literally, whatever you consume is affecting your body, and maybe it catches up to you sooner than you think, or it's something that we don't really think about. But honestly, if you look at this society, if you look at America, you see fast food restaurants everywhere. You see people in line in these fast food chains like no other it never stops and your health is going to affect your body right it's something that we need to understand and so from our health if we don't take care of our beautiful body then we get sick we get sick then we rely on medications or whatever our doctor tells us to do next thing you know we're in the pharmacy line and we're waiting for our prescription um right and is it really going to heal what needs to be healed i don't know but i'm the type of person i never take medication i never nope i don't take medication and why is that relevant i don't know to bring you perspective <laughs> that i believe that the answers are in nature like i truly believe that even us as individuals we have the power to heal ourselves with our mind with our vibration with what we choose to intentionally consume and we can stay away from relying on this pharmaceutical industry which is billion billion billions of dollar industry it is a billion dollar industry just think about how many sick people exist due to not taking care of yourself, you know what I mean? I truly do believe that psilocybin is healing and that it could really change someone really, really fast, even after just one experience with magic mushrooms. In addiction, for example, if there's someone addicted and they go through therapy session under the influence of psilocybin what happens is like psilocybin has the power to give you a different perspective and to really just see things from a greater greater perspective i don't know it's almost like you zoom out and you see yourself and you see the issue you literally see it and you know that all you have to do is change, change what you're doing in your life for things to change. It might not be that simple, but the experience allows you to see it in a very simple way, if that makes sense. And one experience can be the experience that is life changing that is life-changing. For example, one of my experiences, I would say, literally changed my life. Um, I believe that I died. <laughs> I literally died. It felt like I left this body. Um, I was able to face my fear of death, and I think that in itself, like, facing the fear of death has allowed me to overcome so much in life because I understand that death is nothing to be afraid of and that there's nothing to be afraid of period and that fear is an illusion and that everything is energy and that in itself has allowed me to navigate through life a lot differently and so i truly believe one experience if you do it right can be life-changing and 
that is why I feel like is a great reason why psilocybin is still legal because let's say if you just need one therapy session or maybe a couple it really depends how you're being treated because let's say you are microdosing psilocybin in very very small quantities and that might require you to do it maybe like in a 30-day window do it every three days if you're microdosing really really small quantities of milligrams where you can't even feel or see the high kind of thing then that's different it might require that amount of time but that's still much less than being hooked on medication for years of your life right or let's say if you're given a full like three grams or four grams and you have a heroic dosage and you go through an ego de death trip that can be the one single trip that changes your whole life so that's the thing that i'm saying i feel like because of that reason because we don't need to rely on it once we get the message we can hang up the phone kind of thing uh, that's the other thing is that psilocybin is not addictive it doesn't have whatever thing <laughs> makes us addictive Basically what I'm saying is that we live in a world where the pharmaceutical industry is so huge that it has so many Americans and people in general relying on medications and medications and all of this fake stuff that exists, fast food, fake food, disgusting food that is detrimental to our health, that is not good for us, which affects our well-being in our life and we're caught up in a society where we're slaving away for other people in order to keep this rat race going where we go to work we work and then we come home we go to sleep and then we go to work and then we go to sleep and we wake up and we do it over and over and over and over and over and we go to work for somebody else in order to keep this cycle going they have to keep the people asleep Right? How do they keep us in this sick society is to continue keeping it sick, right? If you look at how the world is moving right now in 2022 with all of these requirements with Coco, you know what I mean, going on, we wonder why. We wonder why. And people go ahead and do whatever the government tells you to do because it's good for your health when in reality I don't know if it's really good for your health you know what I mean so we are legalizing psilocybin magic mushrooms in a therapy setting is going to be a huge 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 step for humanity that's a huge statement but yeah for humanity I believe so if everything goes right because look, I've been listening to a lot of interviews with like Tim Ferriss, Hamilton Morris, you can look these up if you haven't already. A lot of scientists out there um, who have been studying psychedelic therapy and fighting for this for years now. And I've learned that uh, reasons why they don't want to legalize it quite yet or if it's even going to happen. And there's a lot of reasons um, another one is, again, like, how are we going to put this in a therapy setting where the patient can trust its therapist and that everything's going to be all right kind of thing. All in all, I think it's going to be a huge move. I feel like in the future, down the road, I hope I get to live through this, that there will be... Uh, little like clinics kind of like a dispensary kind of thing although they have noted that it's not going to be like marijuana where there's dispensaries and you can walk in and buy some it's not going to be like that as of now I think so because I think that in the near future there will be something like that like clinics where you can come in and you can get yourself some magic mushrooms you know what I mean I feel like the legalization for it is going to move very quickly because like I mentioned at the beginning there's so much controversy around this and the reason for it I feel like it's people who are asleep who who don't believe in plant medicine although mushrooms is fungi 
you know what I mean? Who don't believe in natural holistic healing, who are caught up in the society, who are probably really in, in it, in it, you know, in the pharmaceutical and all of that, and all of this fake unnatural life. They just don't understand. But I feel like some of these people, if they themselves experience like PTSD, addiction, all of these things that can take over your life, or if they have loved ones who do and they go through this psilocybin treatment and they see their life change, I feel like that can really cause a ripple effect in the way that people think and the way that things are going to move forward. Um, but I truly believe that it's going to change humanity. It's going to change the way that we see things. Um, I just feel like there's going to be a lot of change coming due to this movement. Like, I do believe that it's going to be huge. I found this article from 2021. It's called Psychedelic Mushroom Firms Move to Oregon. And it just made me think, another thing is that I feel like uh, psilocybin will become a huge market similar to cannabis where it's just going to become huge as, you know, we move forward with the legalization and changing of people's perspectives. Uh, it's going to be a huge market and I feel like um, a lot of investors are going to invest in it in some form or way. I know that there's a lot of labs or studies where uh, they're privately funded and there's not a lot of um, funding going towards it because the government won't help out with that. As I discussed earlier, the reasons of probably why, I feel like it also applies to that. Uh, but basically, I feel like there's going to be a lot of investors realizing that this market is kind of untouched although it's been studied for years and years and years because there's been so much controversy around it it hasn't really been something that people dive in and invest in but it is almost like something that's new to us um even though it's not new i think that a lot of people are going to open up their mind and realize what's in front of them. And those of us, like myself, who have been aware and studying this for quite a while, we're gonna be uh, excited for everything that's coming. Honestly, I'm very excited because like I mentioned, it's completely changed my life. And uh, I hate that it's labeled as a drug because I see this as medicinal medicine that should be used with intention a lot of intention and in a healing kind of setting not just used just because um, so yeah those are my thoughts <laughs> and another thing like I mentioned is that I'm filming this video like almost two years after this news came out so since that time Oregon is not the only one to decriminalize psilocybin there's other states as well I don't know off the top of my head, but I believe Colorado is one of them, and there might be a few more. Another thing to note is that cannabis right now in the states are, is not legal in all states, which I think is really, really, really weird being an Oregonian and just seeing dispensaries on every corner <laughs> is really weird when I travel and I see other states where it's you can't just go buy some. It's really weird to me. I feel like that is also going to happen with psilocybin. I mean, of course it is. We're already seeing it, you know, Oregon here, one state here shifting and the other states are like, nah, not interested kind of thing. But as we continue to move forward, I think that that we will still continue to see that. Something that will be interesting to see is going to be the requirements of the therapist who is going to be overseeing these patients taking psilocybin. I think it's going to be really interesting to see what the requirements are because you are administering a drug, basically. But I don't think that everyone is put up to do this, so it's going to be hard. Like, I don't feel like a doctor who has never done shrooms should be guiding someone 
you know what I mean? I just feel like if you've never experienced the magic of them, you have no idea what someone can go through. You can't really relate to how healing they are or how you need to guide someone. But I also feel like um, finding like gurus or people who love to study this like myself, I think that that might be hard as well. But who knows? Who knows? And because I feel like the requirements may require like some sort of course or PhD, I don't know, who knows, right? So I think that's going to be something that's really exciting to see. Um, I do know that there's people who already do this like on the low, you know, illegally, that they guide people through um, little ceremonies kind of thing and maybe they'll continue to do it and I mean, I think it's beautiful. Psilocybin is going to continue to change many, many, many lives and humanity in general. I'm saying this right now. I said it here. Okay, <laughs> drop your comments below on what your thoughts and experiences are, what you believe the future of psychedelics is in regards to magic mushrooms. And thank you so much for being here, for watching this. I hope that you have a beautiful day.